So once we have completed the first step I mentioned before, um, as you can see here, I have all joints created. All of them are in the hidden layer, so that's why we can see them right now, but they are here, okay, as you can see. And we have, uh, remember, particular interesting joints are joint one, which is the one corresponding to this motor here. And then we have joint two, joint three, so it's joint two and joint three, and also joint four, which is the one here for this motor here. The rest, the name of, are not that important, okay? Also, I would like to mention that I have created duplicated joint here in this axis, particular axis here, because as you can see here, there's a joint for moving these two parts. Okay, there has to be a joint for moving these two parts, and there has to be another joint to move these two parts here. So that's why I created this joint here, which is exactly in the same place as this joint here, as you can see. Okay, and I will use them uh, independently. Okay, also very important to mention is that all joints need to be in torque force mode, okay, and only the joints 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay, need to be enabled and position control because they are actually joints related with the servos, okay, so joint 1, joint 2, joint 3, and 4 will be position control, okay? These are the parameters for the PAD controlling the, the servo, so it's up to you to, uh, to tune these parameters if you want to adjust the speed, the maximum speed of the servo and so on, okay? But by default, it's working fine. Um, okay, and the rest of the joints will be, all of them will be in force torque mode, okay? So, once you have this step, now, you have to create, or the idea is to create uh, dynamic shapes uh, with pure objects, okay? And uh, for that, in order to do that, we are going to create it from the actual geometry we have in, uh, in the robot parts, okay? So this is something we already have seen. It's a tedious step, but it is a necessary step because otherwise the simulation might be very, very slow, okay? And we don't want that. We want to have a fast simulation. So in order to do that, we can enter into the uh, edit shape mode in order to uh, extract a pure shape geometry, like a cuboid, cylinders, and things like that, from the triangles we select. Since we don't have select anyone, we don't have any, any, any triangle selected, then we can just simply invert the selection and extract cuboid and say, okay, here it is, okay? And then we exit from here, and then here, that's our cuboid. We can just simply call it base thin. Okay, I like to call it like that. So it's, then we have the pure geometry and the non-pure geometry with the same name, but the underscore thin the, or dynamic, okay, from dynamic, okay? And this one, I like to include it or move it to the hidden layer here. And also, uh, in general, all, um, the geometries or the, the, the objects we're going to create will be dynamic and respondable. But this one, because it's the base of the robot, will be static, okay? And also, I like to, in this case, I prefer to uncheck this uh, local respondable mask because we don't want uh, all the parts of the robot, once we have the hierarchy of the robot with all parts and everything, they will be uh, locally uh, related due to the hierarchy, and um, and if we uh, uncheck this uh, local, local respondable mask, uh, then the robot parts won't collide, okay? At least for the moment, it's a good idea. Okay, and uh, so if you want, I can just simply try to show you how to create also, let's say, these parts here for corresponding to the link one. For instance, if we go here, we invert the selection, we create a cuboid, there it is, uh, because the link one, it's composed of a lot of uh, parts, then we have to group them, okay? And we're going to create separately uh, the dynamic parts first, and then once we ha we're done, we are going to group them. Okay, there it is. And 
also, for instance, uh, we can create actually that one too. I'm sorry, shape, not cuboid. We will need to remove the shape afterwards. Okay. Actually, this shape, this is, yeah. And, uh, and now this one here. There it is. And now that one, uh, it's a geometry. As you can see, uh, let me just simply show you if we hide this, uh, if we check this, uh, you have a clear view of exactly what I mean. The part here for the bottom part of the link one, it's, um, it's narrower here and slightly wider here. Uh, for now, uh, we don't care, okay? But if you want to do it properly, then what you would have to do is to select part of the triangles here to create a cuboid, then select the triangles here to create a different cuboid and group them together, okay? Because by default, always it has uh, the convex hull of the full uh, geometry, and it will actually, this bounding box you will see, you see here, this will be the size of the cuboid if we select all of them. And that's what I'm going to do right now, okay? It's not that relevant uh, to have the proper shape, but it's up to you if you want to do it, okay? So now what we have is a set of uh, cuboids here I have created. And now what I'm going to do is to group them. So we have to right click here, enter in edit mode, group merging, group selected shapes. And all these will be actually now the same pure geometry. And then we can call this link one underscore dynamic dyn. Okay. We have to do the same for all the parts here. And uh, the rest of the parts are not so complex. Just beside the, the only thing is uh, here in the gripper, all these parts can be grouped together as a, cuboid or whatever you want to do, create here. You can even create part of this shape here, okay? And the process is quite tedious and it requires some time, okay? But just be patient and try to do the best as you can. The only mention or important thing that I would like to mention is uh, here in the gripper, if we want to interact with objects, then maybe it's a good idea to generate a shape which will be composed, let's say, uh, let me just simply subdivide this into more triangles like that, yeah. To create a shape, let's say like something like that for the tip. Let's see if it works. Yeah, no, it only... It needs to select more triangles here. Yeah, that's it. Cuboid. Okay, that's our tip of our finger. Yeah, let's say we are happy with that. And now we need to select those triangles, but in particular, these ones will might cause problems. So let me just do it like that. Let's select this one. And let's, let me select these ones here. Oh, no, I have selected. Okay, let me do it again. Uh, clear selection. That's it. Not responding now. Yeah, sorry. It's not responding now. Okay, so let me let's say select these triangles here. Let's see if. They are selected. Okay, and now let's select only these ones. Let's see if it works. It needs to add more triangles here. Ah, no. 
let's start again. Okay, maybe I shouldn't select those ones, but that's okay. You and you have uh, you get the idea, okay? And then you can create a cuboid from those, okay? Maybe I sh I shouldn't select those ones, so I should select only from here. So the idea is that you can create purely, approximately the shape of the finger. That would be better if you want than to manipulate objects, okay? So this is something I leave for you, okay? So now your task is to complete and create all the dynamics and pure geometries that you have in this robot related with each of the links, okay? Thank you very much.